Without any further ado, please let me introduce to you our guest today. It's Denise Van Osh and Frank Roberts. Please take it away and let's learn. Thank you, Allison. So my name is uh, Denise Van Osh and I'm the coordinator for the Civil Engineering Technician Program. And I'm Frank Roberts and I'm the coordinator for Construction Engineering Technology Program. Our two programs uh, share a common first intake, first term intake in the fall. And uh, the civil program is a two year diploma, whereas the construction program is a three year advanced diploma. We do have uh, both programs um, satisfy the educational component for membership with OSET. And OSET is the Ontario Association of Certified Engineering Technicians and Technologists, which is our uh, professional uh, governing body in Ontario. The, currently the civil program has a TAC accreditation, which is a technology, oh, I forget the acronym, Frank, could you help me out there? Uh, technology accreditation <laughs> council. <laughs> okay. So it's for Canada and uh, the civil program is uh, accredited in that uh, nationwide uh, accrediting board. And the construction program is currently in the steps of the program is also uh, recognized by the Canadian Institute of Quantity Surveyors, which is another governing body for our profession for estimating. And so the construction program satisfies all educational components for um, membership with their governing body. Next slide, please. Next slide. And uh, like I said just previously that the, the uh, first term in September it is a common first term. Okay? So that um, it allows you an opportunity to take the fall term. And if you are first uh, registered in the civil program, you may decide, oh, you know what, after this first term, I think I would like to switch to the, um, the three-year program. And that is quite seamless after the fall term. So that's why we have that common first term. Some of our program highlights, which is, uh, some of these are for specifically for both um, Courses. We have an annual awards ceremony that offers, um, that offers uh, our students um, some achievements from the past uh, school year. We also have a first year kit, which includes uh, drafting supplies, a hard hat, a calculator, measuring tape. Um, for, so those things that uh, when, you, when we do have um, on-site site visits for construction, construction sites, you already have the necessary uh, for personal protection of equipment. We also run a first year bridge competition and a concrete design competition uh, in our two of our first year courses. And the bridge competition is that you actually do the design work and then you build your bridge uh, scale model using a specific, particular uh, style of uh, balsa wood, I believe they call it. And then we test it to fail. So it's a competition that uh, every year that we do and it's uh, pretty exciting. You see, uh, you see the fruits of your labor from your design, but then we also get the satisfaction of pushing it to its limit and, and busting it in half, right? So it's always a, a fun uh, thing there. And as well as the concrete design competition. <clears throat> so students will, uh, you'll, you'll um, be testing your mix of concrete and then we allow it to cure. And then again, we do bust it to see what the uh, strength of your concrete is. In the third year, in the three-year program, the Construction Engineering Technology Program, there is also an opportunity to participate in this bid competition, the Canadian Institute of Quantity Surveyors bid competition. And it is a real life project that uh, third year students will have to prepare an estimate. So they'll get all the pricing and quantities together. And it's like an official bid process and all there's plenty of uh, students across Canada that also compete in this competition. So it's, uh, it's pretty good to put your, your uh, skills to test there. In the three-year program, we also have a group technical report. And this technical report satisfies also the requirement for membership with OSET. And remember again, OSET is at Ontario Association of Certified Engineering Technicians and Technologists. Again, that's just for the three-year program. The two-year program, uh, in order to be uh, a certified technician, they do not require a technical report, so we don't have that in the two-year program. Both programs in their final term also take a course called Professional Ethics, 
And there is an option to complete the another requirement for OSET, the professional practice exam. And that is offered to students if they wish to do so. Also in the third year program, we have uh, what we call a work placement. It's a one day a week in the final term of the construction program. And, it, and we think of it as a, almost like a 12 to 14 week um, interview with the company. And many students will go on or be offered um, employment with the companies that they do have their work placement with. So it's a very good, um, very good uh, opportunity for students to have some real life experience that satisfies their um, component for graduation, but it also gives them perhaps an opportunity to become fully employed with the company that they um, do their work placement with. Did you have anything to say there, Frank? Anything I missed? No, just following along, um, just that the tech report gives you uh, a chance to put all of the, the terms that you work so hard in, term one, two, three, and four, in term five and six, you turn this into an actual report. Um, so you actually design a new building, you take do all of the, all of the work necessary um, to get it right from design right to completion and building permit. And you create a, a tech report that um, demonstrates that you have a, a firm working knowledge of of how we design and how we get buildings to contract and then um, obviously start to, to build them. Um, the third year placement is not um, a, a co-op, but as Denise said, it is very, uh, it's a great opportunity to go out there and, and have a uh, experience and experience the way other companies, uh, you know, perform their duties. And um, it's a great learning opportunity for students. And sometimes students, they'll think they want to go into an avenue of like, Design work, and maybe they'll have their work placement in that design work. And it, sometimes they decide after that 14 weeks, you know what? I think I want to try something else. And so, good. It has good, it's a really good learning experience to see what avenue do I want to continue down for my students. So positive, even if it doesn't really work out for you. So let's go to the next. Slide. Next slide. So here's some of the we've kind of broken it down. You'll see vocational skills on the left hand side and we have drafting and design. And then you'll notice we have AutoCAD, Revit and Civil Fleet. In both programs, we are using Autodesk products and both programs will get uh, an intro into AutoCAD. Then Revit, which is the architectural component of the Autodesk products, that will be strictly for the, con the construction engineer. And then the other product is Civil 3D, and that is for infrastructure projects. So those projects where you need road design, you need sanitary sewer design, you need uh, storm design and water main, we use Civil 3D as that product. And construction and civil both get hands-on experience with that, but the civil side just has a little more focus on that one. In drafting and design, you'll notice residential. Well, civil does get a small portion of it, it's mostly uh, geared towards the three-year technology program. Same as uh, commercial, commercial uh, drafting design, but there is a sharing of structural and municipal infrastructure for both programs. Both programs have several courses in estimating, have courses in project management, have courses in material testing, as well as building code and construction surveying. Uh, in building construction inspection, that is strictly for our two-year program for the civil engineering technician students. And construction uh, surveying has more, there's a two, there's an additional course in the civil engineering technician program. So there is some commonality, but there is some deviation as well. And next slide there. You want me to go with this, Denise? Sure, please. Both these programs are laptop programs. Uh, what that means is that included in your tuition for your, for your enrollment, uh, you're issued a Niagara College laptop to use for the, the full duration that you're in the program. It is your laptop to keep. When you graduate, um, there's a small, uh, you know, you have to bring it in and, and get some programs taken off, but um, it is your laptop when you're done. The reason for this is because, as Denise just alluded to, we use Autodesk programs. Uh, Autodesks are obviously professional licensed software. So we load everything onto these laptops that you'll be using for your term so that you have all of the software you need. You don't have to buy any other software. You don't have to download any software. It's all included within your tuition price. 
these laptops are maintained and supported on site. All of our uh, IT professionals are Dell certified and they look after them. Um, if something goes wrong with your laptop, you bring it in and if they can't fix it on, you know, on the, the spot while you're there, um, they'll give you a loaner. So you always have a laptop to use in both of these programs. Okay, so they are maintaining it for the full duration that you're in here. So um, we use it for obviously our CAD drafting and design software. We have estimating and projects so uh, management software that we use and the other courses, English and computer applications and so on. Um, and the big one that we use obviously is Blackboard and that's our platform we use to share material with our students. So we post all of our assignments there, all of our uh, class notes and so on. So all of this is ready for you on the laptop. Okay, so it's, it's for you to use. Again, there is no additional cost to you. It's included in your tuition and it is yours um, when you leave. The reason why we issue these is because we can't have students obviously using illegal software uh, or pirated software to do any work for the college. Um, so again, it is yours to keep when you, when you graduate. It is maintained by the college for the, the full duration that you're at the college, and it is yours, you know, to look after and, and maintain. Okay, and then Denise? Um, yes, I also think the advantage of the laptop is that if you want to work on your uh, drafting and design uh, projects at 3.30 in the morning, you have it available to you because the laptop is with you all the time. You don't have to worry about going into a lab at the college. Okay? So that's one big benefit. Go, uh, you know, you're going, your parents want to take you away for the weekend. You can bring your laptop and you have access to that um, information so that you can uh, use it when it's convenient for you. So we find those to be very big plus. Next slide. Okay, next. So these next couple of photos, this is uh, from <clears throat> our advanced construction surveying course. And it's just using some of our uh, surveying equipment. Notice the top middle one there, that's a GPS unit. Um, the one on the right hand side, those are our total stations. We have a rotary level, a uh, laser level on the lower right, or sorry, the lower left, and then uh, just a regular automatic level, right? So we use all three, all four pieces of these equipment in our, not only in our survey camp, but also in our advanced construction survey. And when I say the term survey camp, that just means a two week period after the winter term, we have 10 days straight of surveying where we go out and we do the field exercises for 10 days in a row. And just keeping in mind that that's outside of a standard 14 week uh, term. We always do that at the end of our winter term and it's for two weeks after the winter term ends. So that's uh, kind of nice because the weather is a little more consistent as opposed to having those survey labs in January, February and March, right? Especially as we're getting starting to get snow in our area. So it's much nicer to do it uh, in the end of April, 1st of May. <clears throat> so it's a, it's, it's, a, it's a great learning experience and um, it's, I, I very much enjoy the surveying world. So it's, um, I like it. <laughs> I hope Frank does too. <laughs> I do. It's a lot of fun. We uh, after the long winter, uh, it's nice to get outside for a couple of weeks and have some have some fun doing some uh, actual assignments hands on with your friends uh, outside, getting some fresh air. Uh, obviously, with with COVID, we take restrictions uh, on being separated and so on. But uh, it's just nice to to break out of that winter funk and and have some nice some good times outside. This is a picture of, of one of our recent graduates, Jessica Garrett is her name. And she was, she came into the college really, very, um, uh, really didn't know what to expect from either program. Um, and she really took it to, to uh, upon herself to do the best she can do. And she graduated obviously, and she did very well for herself. She's standing in one of our shops um, that we use to, um, the, the construction techniques used to actually build structures inside of there and we get to as construction and civil students we get to go in and have a look as these buildings are being built and we see how they're being put together um, in the back of this area there is a, a woodworking shop again we don't use that but we can go in and and, and see how things are actually made um, jessica here did a fantastic job she is so happy um, the opportunities that opened up for her after she graduated was just staggering and right now she has a very good career going 
Um, and she's very successful and very energetic still about the, the industry. So she's doing very well for herself. Okay. Next slide. Okay. Okay, so I'll take this one. So these, uh, the next, this next drawing that we are gonna show is something called a plan and profile. And it was generated using Autodesk Civil 3D software. And both programs have exposure to this. We call these municipal design drawings. So if we could go to the next slide there. Uh, what you'll notice, this is a typical drawing that is in our industry. And no, in order for any road works to be done, any infrastructure projects to be done, so storm sewer, sanitary sewer, water main, even just road, road reconstruction, uh, these drawings are imperative for that actual work to be completed. And uh, the top portion on this page is the plan. And directly below that, that's considered the profile. And we think of that as if you took a, I kind of equate it sometimes to a, if you had a three layer cake, right? You have a three layer cake and you look at the top and that's where it says happy birthday. That's the plan view. As soon as I cut into the cake, and I separate the cake where I can see the three layers, that's what I consider the profile view, right? So we think of this as cutting right down the center of the road and the profile is looking at the road inside elevation. Then you'll also notice we have cross section examples. Those are um, done perpendicular to the, the center line of the road. So I'm able to see a cross section of the road at even interval stations. And this is all, we require all three views in order to do, to place the design uh, into becoming actuality, right? And then we also, a lot of the times there's a typical road cross section to see what the ideal for the road will be. Okay, we'll do the next slide there. And here's just uh, another one, another version of it. Uh, so again, we have the plan view and the profile. And in the profile, you can see everything that's underground, right? Uh, you can see how the underground pipes relate to one another. You can see that there's a separation between them. And on the plan, you can see the separation um, horizontally, but in the profile, you see the separation vertically from each other. And those are standard drawings. And these are actually two drawings that are, is a current assignment in the municipal design class. Okay, we'll go to the next slide. This next one, horizontal curve drawing. So this one we're looking at, it's existing ground features and contours. And it was completed. We actually went and used GPS instrumentation to actually data collect the existing ground features. And then we brought um, that data collected information from our GPS and we created a drawing using again, Autodesk Civil 3D. Now this drawing is exclusive to the Civil Engineering Technician Program. So if we wanna have a look at that one, let's go to the next one there. And you can see the contour lines. Uh, you can see there's some existing ground information. We have a catch basin, we have a manhole. And this is out in the field out front of the Welland campus um, and it fronts uh, First Avenue. And it's right out front of our athletic center there. And this is a, a typical plan that shows um, the elevation based upon contours. It shows us a gravel path, right? It's showing us the line work of what is actually out there. And we'll, we um, uh, are able to read these drawings now, right? And then the other thing that's shown on here is a horizontal curve design uh, that you can see in the center of the drawing there. It is um, standard notation for when we have um, the center line of perhaps say a road. Okay, we'll do the next slide. Now this is my answer sheet because it was drawn by me, but students also do the, the drawing. <clears throat> I'll let Frank take over this one. Okay, the next one you're gonna see is Autodesk Revit software. Uh, if you're not familiar with that, it is a 3D rendering model uh, program. And as you're building, a plan as you're looking down on a sheet of paper and drawing something, Revit's actually creating it in 3D and visually lets you see it simultaneously. As you create the wall, it will put the wall in and you'll be able to see it. Um, I think we have some 
some uh, drawings. This is related only to the construction engineering, the three-year program. Uh, the civil program goes on and does the civil 3D, but this is for the three-year program. So as you can see here, we take um, an idea and a concept and we use this powerful software to turn it into something that really shows and really looks professional in, in the drawing format. Um, you get three terms of Revit. Uh, in the third term, you actually create a residential house. Um, so we, we talk more about the, the wood and the foundation and you know more residential design. In the fourth term, we talk about something like this, which is a commercial, a large building that gets into more of, of concrete and masonry and steel uh, structures and so on. So this is a typical floor plan that we create. Okay, this is an old one. You don't get to do this again, so don't save the image. Um, so this is, this is a typical commercial uh, set of drawings that we create. And as you can see, it's very detailed. With the software, we're allowed to, um, as you can see, we can put in water closets and sinks and staircases and furniture. Um, doors drop in automatically. And again, all of these are being created in 3D as you are generating this. I think we have another slide. Next one. And this is the second floor. So this sits on top of that last drawing that you saw. And so within this structure, this building, we have to look at how we're going to support this level. This is the second level. Um, and so inside of Revit, we can insert beams and we can insert columns. And again, this is all done in 3D. It's all actual size and, and the actual placement is very, very accurate. So this is the second one. Next slide. And we wind up with something that looks like this at the end. And this is a computer generated rendering, obviously, of the building that you just saw, first floor and second floor. Um, the canopy out front, that's a special exercise that we do. Uh, but within this Revit, we can actually create any shape that we want. As you can see, the canopy out front there um, is, in this case, very, very unique shape. And we actually create that in the software as well. Um, you can see that the renderings here, we can put trees in, we can put grass, we can put sidewalks uh, and some water in there. And we make really uh, some really special presentation drawings when we're actually done. Is there another one? There we go. And these are just elevations. So for instance, we can go in perspective or we can go orthographic and we can see the way that this building is going to actually look from each side. We can apply materials to it so the client knows that it's going to be red and blue. Um, any, any colors that we need to put on there. And as you can see, we have the parking completely detailed, the sidewalks, the curbs, any landscaping. Um, this is a great, great view of that uh, canopy that I was just mentioning um, that we can create out of any kind of material that we want inside of Revit. So it's very powerful software um, that we use and we go into it quite extensively and the students seem to really enjoy it. So if you're really into the architectural design flair, if you would, um, then the three-year program would be, would be offering you this Revit software. I don't know if we have another one, do we? We can look at these all day, no, okay. <laughs> so this is the civil. We'll pass it back to um, Denise. Sure. So uh, we have, um, <clears throat> what's great is that uh, we have a pathway here uh, that if you graduate from the civil engineering technician, you are eligible to uh, enter into year two of the construction engineering technology advanced diploma. So you graduate from the civil engineering technician and then you can start in the second year of the construction technology Two more years and have the opportunity to um, have get uh, get awarded both diplomas. So taking the civil first, graduating from the civil, and then doing two more years to graduate from the construction engineering technology. And we have had students in the past do this and uh, very successful in their careers. Let me go to the next slide, though. There's also multiple pathways uh, depending upon uh, where you would like to further your education. And one of the ones that we do find students from our three-year program going to is to Mac University to go carry on to get their Bachelor of Technology in Civil. Now, even though the, it's construction engineering technology, it's really the three-year program, graduating from the three-year program, allows you to advance on to the McMaster University. Or the other thing there's, there is also, if um, at, the, at our college, right, we offer a GIS program, 
which is a certificate program that it, after you graduate from the civil or the construction, that is also a possible avenue to get into. So geographic information systems, and that's all about asset management, right? And we think about asset management for municipalities in the way of uh, being able to keep track of their infrastructure that they have within the municipality. So taking care of their lamp posts, taking care of their um, manholes and uh, water mains and things of that nature. So there are multiple different pathways. It just depends upon what avenue you wanna go down. And, and having said that, uh, it's not necessary to continue on into a pathway. You are 100% com completely employable after either the two-year program or the three-year program. Just depends upon how much farther you want to take your educational career. <clears throat> With the next slide there. Here are some potential careers that we have. So site, and this goes for both the two-year and the three-year program. So site supervision. If you want to get into serving, if you want to get into actual design work or estimating, right? Which you'll probably notice from the first two that we show on there. If you really like to be outside and you want to get your kind of maybe get your hands more involved on how the actual work goes, uh, actually completing the actual physical work, you might want to go into site supervision or surveying. If you're more a person who likes the office and likes to, the computer and the design work, yeah. maybe design and estimating is something that you want to look into doing. Can we go to the next slide. Though. Also, construction inspection. There's home design, material testing, building inspection, uh, lots and lots of different avenues. And these are just eight that kind of come, come off the top of our head. Uh, there's still, there's, there's uh, students that get into um, trust design. So you'll go and you'll work for a company called Turkstra that does trust designs for um, homes all, uh, that require, every, every house requires a roof, right? So we all have to have our trusses in order for the roof structure to be completed. Uh, but some go into um, suppliers, right? So actually going and working for the concrete batching company, uh, that's also a, a, a viable option. Material testing, like sometimes on um, uh, every batch of concrete has to, has to be tested before it actually gets poured. So we have uh, those students doing that as well. So there's lots of different career options. And the interesting thing about our industry is there's a lot of people that are retiring within the next five to 10 years and they want people, they need the youth of today to get interested in these, in these uh, careers. And, and right now it's becoming uh, an extremely um, sought after, like we are getting calls probably on a weekly basis, looking what students do you have coming down the pipe we need. So we need, so many students and there's just not enough students that are getting interested in this. So this career, well, well infrastructure may not sound um, fun and fancy like game design, uh, there is a definite need to fill these positions, right? So I, like, I think the Revit looks way more exciting, but um, I, always, I went into infrastructure <laughs> and I like, uh, I like the Civil 3D, it's not as flashy, but it definitely uh, is, it's a, it's a good challenging and it's always different, right? You think, oh, a pipe is a pipe, but it's always different. And so there's always challenges and things that you need to overcome and, and that kind of challenge is uh, exciting to take on. And you can see it come to fruition, right? Well, you can see how, if you do this one design, you can watch it being put into the ground to see the fruits of your design and your drafting um, abilities. Frank, did you want to add anything? Um, just kind of reinforce what you, you mentioned about uh, needing people, especially in the building inspection and plan review and construction inspection uh, field. Um, as Denise alluded to, a lot of people are retiring and they are really in desperate need of inspectors and people that want to go into that path. There are huge opportunities to advance your career once you become uh, an inspector or a plans examiner. Um, usually the municipality that you're working for will, will pay for you to go back to school and, and become more uh, knowledgeable on a specific um, topic. There are, I don't think there are any municipalities, cities, towns uh, around this area that do not hire and they're not looking for uh, Niagara College graduates. 
as Denise said, every year we get calls and, and they are really looking for people to come in. And those are great jobs. They are steady jobs. They are, uh, you know, we're always going to have building departments. We're always going to have cities. So uh, those are great jobs to get into. So um, if that's what you are really interested in, then there's a great future in that for you, yeah. especially in the next five, 10 years. Yeah. So. so we'll do the next slide. So we have a couple of graduate uh, success stories. And this uh, one gentleman, Anthony Inferno, he was a graduate of the civil program. And he is now working as a project coordinator, civil designer at a company called Helix Engineering. Helix is a uh, municipal infrastructure uh, company, and he's responsible for design and drafting municipal servicing plans, coordinating of project status and timelines, technical report writing, site inspections, and cost estimates. We would highly recommend this uh, program. He gave us uh, notice that we offer a ton of industry experience, and um, he also offered that black faculty is always willing to help. And it's quite nice to hear a graduate uh, say that. Uh, we, we, we like to think that we are willing to help, but it's nice to get that affirmation that uh, that was felt through the student. So he is doing very, very well for himself. And uh, that's, that's always good news to hear. Do you want me to do Jessica? Sure. Uh, you're cutting out a little bit on my side. So uh, yeah, Jessica Garrett was the, the young lady that you saw earlier in the slides. And again, she graduated from construction engineering in April of 2019. Um, she is now a design technologist with the city of Port Colborne. And I believe she started there very, very shortly right uh, after graduating. And she's responsible for some pretty important stuff when you're working with a city. She's responsible for all of the procurement, procurements for the contracts. She's actually uh, part of the contract administration team. So she's actually administrating these contracts. She is certainly very heavily involved in the technical design and surveying with the, with the city. Now, this is right out of graduation, so she's done very well. Absolutely recommends the program and, and uh, offered me, a, the program offered her the opportunity to get a wide range of skills. As you can see from these slides, we touch on, uh, we don't, don't just focus on one area. We expose you to a lot of different fields and different opportunities within the construction industry. Um, and the employers around this area know the level and the quality of Niagara College graduates, and, and they're looking for the qualities that they have. Uh, she also mentioned that the, the faculty was amazing and passionate about their industry. We have seven, currently have seven full-time uh, faculty in both programs. We work both, both pro programs, all of us. Um, we have years and years of experience in all of the, the topics that we teach. And it's known uh, in the area that, uh, you know, we do produce some very, very strong and eager students uh, for, you know, possible employment after they graduate. Um, so Jessica has done very well for herself. And doesn't this just strengthen, Denise, the fact that, yeah, you're available. Um, I, I really like to point this out to anybody that's attending these sessions today. Or you're the people that are going to be teaching them in the future, and your information is on the screen. You are already available for questions. So if that doesn't just give you, you know, a little bit of reassurance that they're available when you become a student. Both of you, 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 you spoke so highly about the Niagara College experience because I, I like to mention to people that we work with community partners. They advise us so that we know what graduates need, right? We meet with them every term of professional advisory council. And, and because we do that, they know we're providing those up-to-date, innovative state-of-the-art, top-notch graduates. We have a reputation, you know, and, and thank you for mentioning the need that's gonna be coming up in the next little while because, you know, when we're surveying prospective students, most of the time the concern is, will I get a job out of this? And so thank you to speaking to that, that there is an absolute need. So I hope the, the people that are watching this now and watch the recording after, um, you know, clearly understand that this is something, you know, perspective to go into because it looks like it's a, you know, a, a fruitful future for them. So thank you for speaking to that as well today too.